What is happening guys? It is Brian Alzer with NeverSafe.com and today is a day that I never thought would actually happen. I am going to do a circus dumbbell tutorial. Now I've had some recent success with circus dumbbells, so that's part of the reason why, but do not get it twisted. I still hate the circus dumbbell and I'm pretty sure the circus dumbbell still hates me. But an online friend of mine who has literally watched this entire process he was a friend of mine on T Nation at the very beginning when I first started my log, and he still is today. He is such a huge advocate of mine. I am such a huge advocate of his, and he asked for a little bit of help on the circus dumbbell, so Jared, this one's for you, buddy. Still definitely hate circus dumbbell. Now, circus dumbbells come in all different sizes, shapes, forms, and that's gonna greatly determine how you manipulate the thing as you're pressing it. However, the clean of the circus dumbbell, there are a lot of common things that are going to be the same between each one. I'm gonna talk later about your rack positions and all that kind of stuff later when we get there. But for a circus dumbbell, as far as equipment that I like to use, I like to wear a belt for a circus dumbbell because anytime you're wearing a belt, you can get more intra-abdominal pressure, which is gonna help with your press. Uh, it's also going to help with the clean. I like to wear Olympic shoes for anything pressing overhead just so that I don't have a squishy platform. So I would highly encourage that or maybe bare feet. But tennis shoes is like doing squats on a mattress. You're just going to be moving around. So I would not say that. And then a wrist wrap. Not so much for the support, but for it cutting into your arm. And again, we'll talk more about that later. But like I said, there are a lot of common things that you will do no matter what shape or size your circus dumbbell is. Number one is you're going to squeeze the handle of the dumbbell as hard as possible. Some handles are smaller, some handles are larger, and it doesn't matter. A lot of times with circus dumbbell, you feel like you can't get your hand all the way around it. That is completely normal. You still need to be trying to crush that thing. Think about like choking, choking the circus dumbbell because it's so terrible. Stupid circus dumbbell. And then of course, the same breathing and bracing that I talk about in virtually every single tutorial is going to be applied here. But for the clean of the circus dumbbell. What I personally like to do is line up on the circus dumbbell with my ankles in line with the front of the rear part of the bell. From there, I get that big belly breath and I reach down with the hand that I'm gonna be doing the pressing with. Whichever hand you are going to be pressing with is the hand that goes on the dumbbell first. So I reach in and I squeeze as hard as I can, then the other hand comes over top of that for the clean. Now, I want you to take that front bell of the dumbbell and tip it downward. This is gonna help you build a little bit of momentum into the clean, and so you almost want to swing it backwards. We're not talking drastic here, we're not talking kettlebell swing, we are just talking an inch or two kind of swing back, and then you're going to explosively load your hips and extend them so that that dumbbell flips up to the top position. I do all this with that one big belly breath that I got before I reach down for the dumbbell. Now, at lighter weights, it's gonna become very easy. You're just gonna be able to flip it up because you're using two hands to clean something relatively light. However, as it gets heavier, that thing's gonna slow down and you're gonna do a lot of stupid things, but you're gonna be able to get that bell to the front rack position just out of self-preservation, I guess. But once you've gotten that dumbbell up to the front rack position, now it's time to really start building the foundation for your press. There are three different rack positions. Number one is going to be to the side. Now to the side is really good for smaller framed athletes and especially women because the circus dumbbell is so big and cumbersome for a woman to put that thing up on her shoulder, it's literally like putting another person on top of their shoulder and that really doesn't work out too well. So a lot of women or smaller guys will add the side dumbbell position. This is gonna allow them to keep their tricep right on top of their lat so that they can get their leg drive and have a strong base to drive that weight off of. The second rack position I wanna talk about is with the dumbbell up against the side of your head. Now, a lot of people will do this and it is a great option because it shortens the range of motion of the actual press. However, it's like doing a super, super heavy tricep extension with a handle that you can barely hold on to. So this is better for people with larger frames and larger hands. It does shorten that range of motion on the press, but it also lengthens the range of motion on your clean because you're no longer stopping here. You need to pull it all the way up to here and then turn your body so that you can get it pressed up against the side of your head. It is also not very comfortable to have a 200 pound dumbbell pressing into your ear. And then the third rack position is gonna be more of the traditional circus dumbbell position that you guys see me do in all my videos. I used to do the position where it was up against my head, but then as I got closer and closer to 200 pounds, I needed to start dropping it down because it just wasn't working out for me I couldn't hold on to the bell trying to extend it I didn't have enough of this strength anyway in this position the dumbbell is literally laying across your back across your trap 
and then you're going to keep your elbow high so that when you drive, you can drop underneath. It's more of a traditional type of pressing movement. But whatever type of rack position that you decide to go with, the circus dumbbell is so individual. It's kind of like looking at a deadlift. Let's just take the conventional deadlift, for instance. There's gonna be different grip widths, different feet widths. Some people's toes are gonna to be pointed way out. Some people are gonna be straight forward. It is going to change. Your hip position is gonna change. Your back position is gonna change. It's different for every single person. So you're gonna to have to play with a lot of different things to see what works best for you. The only problem is with the circus dumbbell, every single one of them is not very fun to do. Back to the rack position, you're going to want three points of contact. Number one is going to be your hand on the dumbbell. Number two is going to be some part of your arm also touching one of the bells of the dumbbell. That is going to add stability, otherwise you're just kind of balancing it in your hand and hoping for the best. And anytime that you are just balancing something in your hand and pressing, it never goes as well as if it has a stable position to sit on. The third is going to be the dumbbell in contact with the other part of your torso. So if that is the side of your head, it's the side of your head. If it's across the back of your trap, it's across the back of your trap. If it is on your shoulder here in the side position, it's on your shoulder, but you're going to want three points of contact so you can have as much energy transfer as possible out of your leg drive. So figure out which one you want to use and then go from there. The second point about whatever rack position you choose to use is that your elbow needs to stay in place wherever you get to the rack position, that's where your elbow is going to stay. Once you move that bell and you get it where you want it. If your elbow is high, it stays high for your dip and drive. If it drops down, you are going to push out and it is not going to end well. If you are on your side and your elbow is here, do not let it collapse in. You need your elbow to stay exactly where it was when you got set. No matter if you're way up here, your elbow cannot drop. If your elbow teeters like this, that bell is going to change its position outward. You cannot do that. It needs to stay exactly where it is. So if you watch your videos and you're doing some self critiquing, if your elbow is moving at all in your dip and drive, you need to fix that. That is your number one problem. Get that fixed first before you do anything else. For the rest of this video, I'm gonna be talking more about that traditional rack position, because like I said, that is what I am most comfortable with, and I don't wanna spend one more second doing any other stupid stuff with a circus dumbbell than I have already done in my life. But with that traditional rack position, once you clean it and you get it up to your shoulder, if you just let this hand free, the dumbbell is not in a good position. It's gonna be facing downward. So it's gonna be constantly trying to rotate forward on you. Especially if you try to apply leg drive, it's going to rotate. That bottom bell is just gonna keep swinging down to the midline. You need to avoid that from happening. So the first thing that I do when I bring the dumbbell up is I hold onto the dumbbell and then I bump it so that I can get my elbow more directly underneath the bell. Now that sticks your arm in kind of a precarious situation, but no one ever said the circus dumbbell was a safe or fun thing to do, but you kick your arm underneath so that you can have more biomechanical structure underneath the actual drive and energy transfer of your leg drive. This would also be where those wrist wraps come into play. So if you have a sharp circus dumbbell like I do, if you do not wrap that arm, you are going to have literally a dent or a rut at best. It can cut you and if you're doing multiple reps, you will get a big bruise and then that. This is not a fun area to continually slam sharp metal objects into. So that is why I use the wrist wraps all the time on the circus dumbbell. It is not to provide any support. Of course, it does help a little bit to keep the dumbbell from kicking to side to side or anything like this, but it's mainly to protect that forearm because it will beat the heck out of it. All right, so you lined up your ankles with the front of the rear bell. You got a big belly breath. You grab the circus dumbbell with the hand you're gonna press with. Other hand went on top. You explode with your hips. You got to the front rack position. Then you bump the bell to get your arm underneath and you are still choking the heck out of that bell like you hate it because you probably should. Now from here, what I want you to do is take the pressing side hip and kick it out. I know this looks funny and it is not the way that you want to be seen in front of all the tens of people that are gonna show up your strongman competition, but it is gonna help your press a lot. The reason why is because all of that weight is on one side of your body. So if you are still standing straight up and down, when you go to apply leg drive, one side of your body is weighted. That's going to turn you into, I'm a little teapot, right? Don't, don't be a little teapot. You kick that hip out so that when you apply your leg drive, that bell can drop straight down the midline of your body as opposed to off to the side, tipping you over, because if you tip over at all, that bell is gonna go out and that is not going to lead to a press. That is gonna lead to about three quarters of press and then a return right back to the start position or you're gonna drop it on your head. Either way, 
it's not gonna go well. All right, so once you have that bell where you want it and you're choking it and you have your hip out, now is the time for the leg drive. Now, before you do your leg drive, in order for it to be a good lift, you need to remove the stabilizing hand. It needs to be a one-handed press. So I would not chance trying to drop into your leg drive with your hand still on it then taking your hand off and pressing. Most judges out there will not give you that lift. So you need to have that hand cleared and then drop in with your leg drive. Now, a lot of people use their leg drive and they bend their knees forward when they try to dip and drive. That is not gonna go well on a log, on a barbell, on an axle, on a circus dumbbell. You need to push your knees outward, almost like you're trying to roll onto the outside edges of your feet. Pushing your knees outward is going to allow you to stay more straight up and down in all planes of the motion. So you think about yourself like a Phillips head screwdriver. You guys have all seen a Phillips head screwdriver. You need to cut the planes of your body in half so that you have cross sections all the way through your body. If that circus dumbbell is sitting right over top of the middle of that cross section because you kicked your hip out, if you bend forward, you are coming off of that axis. You're coming off of that midline. Pushing your knees out will allow you to stay in the center of that Phillips head screwdriver so that you can press that dumbbell directly above your head. You do not press out, you press directly above your head and then you stabilize. So just make sure that you are pushing your knees out on your leg drive instead of forward. You can definitely critique that by yourself with taking some videos of your presses. And another point on the leg drive, you need to dip and drive fast. So when things get heavy and you start initiating that first drop of your legs, that first bend of your knees, if it's heavy, a lot of times people will drop super slow and then try to explode out of it. That does not go well. If you think about something like a super high box jump, you would not drop super slow and then try to explode as fast as possible. You explode down, the faster you go down, the faster you come up. So when you do this dip and drive, it does not need to be a ton of legs. Your intention is to put as much leg into it as possible. However, you need to move quickly. So as deep as you can get, still moving as fast as you possibly can, dip, drive. As the dumbbell goes up, you want to re-bend your knees again, dropping under. Now, I would talk more about this right now, but I did an entire video about the jerk or push press or whatever that I will link above so you guys can really get a feel for that throw and catch motion of the circus dumbbell. You are not doing a push press. You are literally trying to throw it off your shoulder, then drop back under and catch it at lockout, then stand up. Now, in order to get a good down command, I think it is very, very imperative that you look at the judge. You're gonna be looking at circus dumbbell because you're gonna be worried that it's gonna fall on your head, right? So you're gonna be looking up like this, but you need to make eye contact with the judge. Demand the down call because you hardly ever look completely stable on circus dumbbell, nobody does. You're kind of standing there, you're shaking, you're making stupid faces, this hand's going all over the place. You need to look at that judge and say, this is locked out, I am good, I am good, give me the down command, give me the down command, give me the down command. Once give you down command, you drop the dumbbell. As far as assistance stuff goes for the circus dumbbell, you cannot beat the strict press, the push press, or the jerk with any implement ever. You're, if your other pressing strength goes up, typically your circus dumbbell will as well. If your circus dumbbell goes up, it is not necessarily guaranteed that your other pressing strength is gonna go up. So of course, those three normal big shoulder lifts that you should be doing anyways. But some things that I particularly work for the circus dumbbell specifically assistance wise are circus dumbbell waiters walks for long distances. We are talking like 400 meters where I lock the dumbbell out above head and I go for a walk. This is ridiculously hard. So this is gonna do a couple things for you. Number one, it's gonna build stability and strength in your shoulder girdle and in the position that you are going to be pressing at. Number two, it is teaching your body how to balance exactly where, where that circus dumbbell wants to be balanced at the top of your arm. If you are not balanced, you are never going to get the press. So this is going to teach you a bunch of different times where your body's gonna say this is the point where we are most stable. This is where we need to get to. So the next time you're working circus dumbbell, when you go for your press, your body will be more likely to go directly to that point rather than kicking up and then trying to find it. And also this one comes from Andy Shido. Awesome, awesome dude, awesome coach, terrific guy. And he showed us how to do axle banded one arm presses. So basically you set up the axle, you line it up exactly like a circus dumbbell, except you have weights suspended from the outsides. From there, you explode up, then drop it down slow, and explode up and drop it down slow. That, again, is not easy at all, but that, I can honestly say, between those two exercises, are probably the reason why my circus dumbbell started moving again. 
and I got that state record. So that was really, really cool, and I have Andy 100% to thank for that, so thank you, Andy. All right, guys, so there you go. There is a tutorial on the Circus Dumbbell. Like I said, I never thought I would actually do this, but hopefully some of you can find this helpful because Circus Dumbbell just keeps showing up in contests. I do not claim to be good at it, so if there's someone else who is better at it than me that is going to teach you about it 100%, listen to them because I am not a fan, and it is not a fan of me. But hopefully this covers some of the basics for you guys so that you guys can get out and hopefully hit some circus dumbbell PRs or do well in your next competition. I thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch up with you guys later in the week. But until then, go out, do something amazing, realize, keep working hard, people. Be nice to each other. And I'll see you then.